Hi folks and welcome back. This week's build is for a two-wheeled handcart. Well, up here in the northeast, it's a bower. And they were used for loads of different reasons. Firstly, it's not a wheelbarrow. That's a different kettle of fish altogether. This type of bower is not something you'd be using to move things like sand, soil or gravel. It would be used to move things like hay, sacks in a warehouse, barrels, luggage on a railway and manure on a farm. The two wheels are more central, allowing for more stability so less likely to tip over and an easier lift due to the physics of where the centre of gravity is. The wheelbarrow benefits from a smaller turn area and a better tipping point for unloading again coming down to the physics or where the centre of gravity is in relation to the axle. And it is a type of barrow that has all but disappeared from daily life and use. But when this model was produced this type of barrow was still in regular daily use. Seen a lot in industry but my mother can still remember them in Walsall Market full of flowers that had arrived overnight on trains fresh from London's Covent Garden, being sold to the public pre-World War II. The build itself is a fun build, as a lot of these regularly overlooked builds are. It is four number two five and a half inch perforated strips, four number five two and a half inch strips, a couple of fish plates, an axle, two wheels, two number 40 8 A double angle strips, a 52 4 flange plate, and two 126 A flat trunnions. I've just used the drift to align the holes as I bolt the handrails on. As you're bolting more and more layers to a build, the drift really comes into its own, as being a very useful tool. Out of interest, this video is sped up by 200% or so, so around 10 minutes to make at normal speed. They, they are great as an introduction to the hobby. My frustration watching this as I write the script is that my hands always seem to get in the way. I need to either buy some vanishing cream or move the camera. But these are not large builds and hands in the way is one of those problems that go with filming Meccano. I don't think there's a good solution for the camera angle problem. And there's a drift coming back into play to align holes up. They are so useful. And as they make great bodkins for making holes in just about anything, I can understand why they always seem to be missing from Meccano sets from this period. So this model is rapidly coming to completion. I think it makes a nice looking model and at the time would have been used to replicate daily life through play. Maybe carrying blocks to make a castle, Meccano sacks or barrels to load an O gauge clockwork train. But either way, as a set zero build goes, the smallest set you could get, it would have made a nice simple challenge for the young child to make. Maybe with the help from an older sibling or adult. And that was one of the goals that Frank Hornby had. He wanted to help build self-esteem that, that makes for a healthy mind. And these older builds help to take us back to a time that has long since vanished. To show us some, some of the technology that we no longer see in daily use. Well folks, that's it finished. This week on Saturday I'm building the drilling machine and the helicopter from the 1960s set one and exploring the history around them. And on Patreon I'm building four tools that would have appeared in workshops, all in 1930s blue and gold. <laughs>